Assalamualaikum class topic of this video is specimen sampling and preservation this video in this video we will discuss the steps following immediately after collecting event the first consideration is what is the purpose of the field work for example what is supposed to be done with collected invertebrate specimen if the specimen shall not be kept alive for experimental studies or for rearing larvae to adults the first logical step is killing or in some cases the narcotization of the specimen if the traps like flight interception traps yellow pen traps or pitfall traps have been used then this step can be skipped in most cases as the specimens are normally killed by the fluid which with which the collecting containers in the traps were filled when the specimens have been collected alive it must be considered if the specimens will be used as a whole as a vouch as a voucher specimen in natural history museum or if they shall wholly or partly be used for molecular or morphological investigations first one is specimen sampling and labeling specimen sampling for molecular analysis molecular analysis such as dna sequencing require particular considerations that preserve dna and are only briefly considered here Usually, the best option to preserve the DNA for a long time storage is to transfer the specimen to a high percentage ethanol, 95 to 99 percent ethanol, which serves both as a killing agent and a fixation agent. The second, the second option is to keep the specimens alive during transport and have them fresh frozen in the laboratory. This allows storing suitable DNA for decades. The biggest enemy of the DNA is humidity, so long time storage in low percentage ethanol should be avoided as well as leaving the specimens in the moist atmosphere. The specimens preserved in ethanol should be put in dark and cool conditions as soon as possible and not left out in daylight during field work or in the laboratory. This applies to all the invertebrate specimen samples in ethanol, whether they are to be used for DNA studies or not. If only low percentage ethanol is available, it may a better option to get a specimen with a killing agent let them dry quickly and store them or just selected body parts of or just the selected body parts of them in the freezer or high percentage ethanol in the laboratory even if the freezer or high percentage ethanol sorry, sorry, even if the specimens are stored in dry conditions dry collection they usually allow extracting suitable dna for 10 or more years or in some cases even 100 or 100 of years but it seems that the success rate decreases significantly over the time. Next one is specimen sampling for the morphological analysis. If the specimens shall be used for the morphological investigations, for example, anatomical dissections, thin sectioning, it is generally most appropriate to kill and store them directly in a fixation fluid. The fluid normally depends on the taxonomic group or the morphological analysis. The specimens that will be used for the histological work can be preserved in a number of different fluids that often contain formalin fluid, fluids like Kali's or Boone's Bowen solution are the best choice for the insect lava as the fixed tissues. Kali's solution also prevents lava from discoloration while the Bowen solution may change the color of the lava to yellow light. Before the formalin is used, it should be considered that it contains formaldehyde which cross links the proteins and make the tissue samples unusable for DNA extractions. Next one is specimen sampling for the natural history collections. In majority of cases, specimens are collected to be stored in the natural history collection for documentation and research, even though this does not preclude that parts of the specimens may still be used in future molecular or morphological studies. The primary purpose of the fieldwork is to yield specimens that should be preserved and stored as a whole. The question that arises is, if the specimens are to be stored in a dry or wet conditions, usually in, as usually, ethanol collection, in most cases, specimens that are to be stored in ethanol collection will already be killed and fixated in ethanol directly in the field 70 to 80 percent ethanol is the standard ethanol concentration it can be suitable to add a small amount of glycerol to ethanol which makes the specimen less stiff uh, also the glycerol does not evaporate which can be an advantage when the containers does not close hermetically 
However, use of grease roll should be avoided for the small winged insects such as micro. Uh, such as micro hymenitopra as it complicates the subsequent dry mounting of these specimens. Glycerol softens the wing, wings in a small insect specimen excessively so they so that they will not stay flat when the specimens are air or critical point dried or and card mounted. Only for the small winged insects that need to be slide mounted, for example, Thysano, Thysanoptera, Thysanoptera glycerol, ethanol solutions are a good option. Ethanol wise should be completely filled with which makes specimens less, less prone to damage during transport. Even small air bubbles that slosh around the wires can cause damage to a very fragile specimen, so special care should be taken to minimize its risk in the field. It should be considered that the glass wires that are completely filled with the ethanol may crack or even explode in the hold of an aeroplane. With plastic wires, these problems can be overcome but it is still useful to seal the screw cap of the oil with strips of parafilm as it may become loose or undone during transit. An authorization is needed to transport the ethanol in an aeroplane and therefore dry storage of the specimen during transit is more advisable. Specimens that are to be deposited in a dry collection are normally killed by a gaseous killing agent and stored dry before they are further processed, for example, pinned and mounted. Keeping and storing the specimens dry in the field usually requires more care from the collector as specimens are more fragile and prone to damage compared to the specimens preserved and transported in a fluid fixation, fixation agent. This is even more severe when specimens are completely dried which can occur within a few hours on a hot and dry collecting day. Especially dry insects are very delicate and care must be taken to prevent specimens from losing legs, heads and antenna during transport. Many collectors therefore transport these specimens in a moist atmosphere which can be plastic box that is laid out with the wet tissues. A few drops of thymol camphor solution or a few crumbs of crystalline thymol should be added to the solution to prevent the specimen from molding. If the smaller specimens numbers are collected, it may also be appropriate to pin the specimens directly after collecting for example in the field or immediately after in the hotel or field, sta field station, which secures the specimen and facilitates subsequent preparation. Special transport boxes can be obtained from the entomological supplier. Also in these dry boxes, it is appropriate to add thymol as the large specimens that cannot dry fast may get moldy. Next one is labeling. Even experienced biologists tend to inappropriately label specimens, so this step needs special attention as the biological specimens lose their significance for research and documentation if they are not or insufficiently labeled. Labeling should be done in the field directly after collecting the specimens or after emptying the traps. It can be convenient to prepare the labels in advance and already print parts of the information. For example, parts of the locality data and name of the collector beforehand or just add the specific data, for example, date and altitude in the field. External labeling of the tubes or transport boxes can be useful but does not replace a proper labeling of the individual specimens or samples inside the respective container. The most widespread mistake during field work is to just add numbers to the specimens or to list the collection data on separate sheets. Even though the collector has strong intention to proper label, properly label this, his samples, some when after the field work there is, a all, there is always a high risk that this will never happen and that the collected samples, specimens will lose their scientific value. It is crucial to it is crucial that the specimens are labeled with all the necessary collecting data. And what are these locality, country, it can be a country, province, nearest city, region, name of the project if it is available, and GPS data if it is available, altitude of the area, collecting method, date of the collection and name of the collector. Further data, for example, 
habitat type, host plant, weather, temperature should also be added as an additional level. The golden rules should be followed to minimize the risk of mis- mixing sampling, mixing samples or losing the locality information. Labels for drown labels for dry specimens should be written with waterproof pens or pencils. Labels for ethanol wine should be preferably be written with ethanol proof inks, for example, micron archival ink pens, sakura cups, or alternatively with a pencil. Laser printed labels will not last in ethanol and should be not used. Well preserved samples should be generally labeled on the tight papers, which is not negatively, negatively affected by the fixation agent. Handwritten labels can be later be replaced by the proper type written labels in the laboratory, but care needs to be taken that spelling mistakes are avoided. Long term storage and viability of ink on the collecting label is a big challenge for the curators of the natural history collection and cannot be addressed in this field manual. However, Every collector should make sure prior to collecting that a long-term storage of this natural history specimens and the necessary curatorial care should, can be guaranteed by the respective institute. What are the rules? Rule number one. Rule number two. Preferably, every specimen gets an individual label, but if it cannot be achieved due to high specimen numbers, at least every sample gets an individual label. What is the rule number three? A sample contains only specimens which have identical collecting data and which are clearly separated in a individual collecting container for the other samples from the other samples. Rule number four. If these specimens are pre-sorted into smaller samples, every sample needs to get a proper label. Rule number five. Labels are always placed inside the vials. Labeling the vials just from the outside is insufficient. Rule number six. Numbering of the sample does not replace locality labels and may later result in confusion and the loss of information. These are the golden six rules for labeling scientific specimens in the field. Next is invertebrate taxa. The right treatment of collected Invertebrate specimen is not only dependent on the purpose of collecting but also on the invertebrate taxon and its life history stage. Soft bodied invertebrates generally require fixation as they suffer from shrinkage if the air dried, while hard bodied cyclotides invertebrates can often be air dried and may even be damaged if put in ethanol. However, there are many exp- exemptions from this rule and many. Taxa require a special treatment which made it necessary to devote a separate chapter to the different terrestrial and limiting invertebrates that can be subjected to the field work. First one is mollusk or mollusca. If the soft parts of the animal shall be preserved as well as the shell if present, it is necessary to narcotize the specimen prior to killing. This ensures that the organisms are expanded and fully displayed and fully display their characteristic features. For this, terrestrial gastropods are best placed in a jar of water. The animals will die in a relaxed position outside the shell if it is present within one or two days. Afterwards, the specimen should be transferred into a preservative which can be 80% ethanol, a mixture of ethanol 80% and water. 15%, 15%, glycerol, 5% or formalin. Several different preservation methods have been described for mollusks, but not all of them are practicable for the field strips. Mollusks, which are anticipated to be included in DNA studies, should be transferred immediately after collecting it to 95 to 99% ethanol. Next one is roundworms, nematoda, flatworms, platyelmantes, segmented worms. Annelida. Nematodes are usually killed and preserved in the laboratory after they have been extracted from the plant or animal tissue or from the soil sample. Due to their small body size, nematodes are always handled in a fluid medium under a dissection microscope. General techniques for handling, killing, and preserving nematodes are summarized in clean hands. 
their aquatic and uh, terrestrial turbillaria are best preserved in FAA. Alternatively, formalin, 5% formalin can be used as suitable fixation agent. The problems of specimen contracting can be contracting can be overcome by a variety of techniques which are discussed in Nunsen and Pai Shokai handle. Some of these techniques require the use of mercuric chloride which would not recommend especially not in the field due to its toxic nature. Final storage of the flatworm should be in formalin, 5% formalin or in the ethanol, 70% or 80% from the segmented worms, the anoreda. Only free living earthworms, oligocheta and leeches are dealt with here. Oligocheta worms shall not be placed immediately in the ethanol unless they are to be used for the molecular study as they shrink. The specimens are washed in the shallow dish and killed in a weak formalin solution. 1 to 2 percent. It is important to slew the specimen with the forceps constantly in the formalin solution, which limits the number of the specimen that can be dealt with to the above five specimens per treatment. After the oligocyte worms got immobilized, they are stretched outside the solution. The specimens are then placed on the blotting paper and then permanently wetted with the formalin solution. Alternatively, specimens can be covered with the cellulose, which have been imbued with the formalin after the specimen is hardened after 30 to 40 minutes they need to be transferred into the glass vials which should be long enough to house the specimens the vials can be either filled with formalin solution 5 percent formalin solution or ethanol 70 to 80 percent ethanol leeches are narcotized in 5 to 5 15 percent ethanol until they do not show any reaction anymore this may take half six hours depending on the size and the physiological condition of the specimen fixation occurs in this formalin solution one ratio four and ethanol 70 percent ethanol or formal alcohol next one is arthropoda in the arthropod we will study fluid preservation of arthropods dry mounting of insects after fluid fixation standard methods of the by preservation and mounting of the insect and preservation in the field and transport we will go through all these topics in this next video thank you